On this day in history, in 1153 AD, we celebrate the re-rise to power of Baldwin III. Baldwin. I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome everyone to another episode of Books and Beer, your weekly tiptoe through the tulip fields of indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and today's episode of Books and Beer is our second visitation to the topic of writing groups. Previously on Books and Beer, I talked about my own writing group, which is mainly a real life affair, and we got a little bit of uh, heat from that. Uh, Lori uh, G. Knapp left some comments and said, hey, uh, you guys are doing it wrong. You need to hear how I run a writing group. So we're coming back to talk about running a virtual writing group. Lori, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you invited me. I think that this is, uh, I, I think you guys missed an important point that needs to be addressed, and I'm glad we're addressing this. Well, okay. let's do it over booze. Yes. What are you drinking, Lori? Oh, sorry. Not a beer drinker. I'm drinking Thai food tea. I drink a lot of black tea. Uh, the cup I'm using today says, Please do not annoy the author. She may put you in a book and kill you. Well, we'll drink for you. Jeff? All right. So tonight, I am drinking a very, very exceptional class of 88 Deschutes Imperial Smoked Porter. And this is fantastic. So if I suddenly disappear partway through, it's because I've gone out back to drink this and smoke a cigar on the patio. So just letting you know. Yeah, that would be you could, you, I, would, I would actually uh, discharge you for that without much of a problem at all. Uh, since we're revisiting a topic, I thought I might revisit a beer that I've had on a lot of occasions. Dale's Pale Ale. My favorite beer of all times. And an excellent choice. So, Lori, let's get right into this. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your writing group? Um, you know, where are they? How are they spread across the globe? And how it came to be? Well, the writing group consists of about half a dozen of us. It, it changes a little bit from time to time. And we uh, cover the country, coast to coast. Uh, I'm in Massachusetts. We have uh, members, who, members of the writing group who are in Washington State and Utah. We cover the middle of the country with Indiana and Illinois. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, that, and the writing group works, and it works due to what you guys know so much about, which is the digital world. Uh, the the biggest issue we had, I think, was dealing with time zones, because we are covering country to country, and everybody is working, but uh, we managed. To find a day and a time when uh, we can regularly meet. We meet uh, twice a month. We all met uh, on one of the. Hold on a second, Lori. 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 Hold on a second. You're, you're giving us a great monologue here, but yes. got a bunch more questions. Yep. And, and one thing I, want, uh, I missed in there: How did you okay. find each other? How did you? How did you connect? How did this come we to be? Were, did you join a group that existed? Were you all, did you know each other online and decide to put this together? We met each other online, actually in the NaNoWriMo forums. And uh, after communicating in the forums, we then started communicating by email outside of the forums. Uh, one of our members had been involved with a physical writing group called Writer's Asylum. And they were they fall into a state of disrepair. So those of us who were communicating online said, well, gee, why can't we be a writing group? And so we're the Writers Asylum online. So okay. so how does it work? I mean, when you guys get together, do you virtually get together at the? You, you mentioned about matching up times. Does, does that really matter? Do you sit together? How how do you do it? What's the technology that enables it for those distances? We use Google Hangouts. We don't use Hangouts on air, so it's not open to the public. It's private. 
but we do a Google Hangout prior to the meeting using a Google Groups page. We choose agenda topics, and uh, but the time is always set. Um, but we choose the agenda in advance, and we share links on that topic in advance. And you know, it, it, it's you know, occasionally we will uh, essentially have somebody making a presentation. Other times we'll all just pitch in. One of the important things that I picked up on from Jeff's discussion of the physical writing group was the importance of accountability, and we agree with that. So one of the things that we do at all of our meetings is we each report in public, face-to-face, -face, uh, virtually, what we've written, what we've accomplished since the last meeting, and what our goals are before the next meeting. So, well, again, we were just having a little bit of, you know, talking about the realities of sometimes technology gets in the way. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, do, I would imagine, Lori, that using the groups as you used before, passing around links, a lot of that sounds to me like it would be easier to do that in a virtual world than a, than a physical, though, though I dare say there's no reason a physical group couldn't use those same tools as well. What, what, what's your take on that? There's no question that a physical group could use the same tools that we're using. We use Google Drive, we use Google Groups, we use Dropbox, and there's no question that those can be used by a physical writing group. I think Jeff mentioned that his group uses Dropbox. Um, so those can certainly be used by either a physical or a virtual and online group. Uh, obviously, they're required with an online group. And we certainly have had our little issues with Google. Uh, for the most part, it's reliable. But we certainly have nights when somebody uh, just doesn't seem to be able to make it. Um, the uh, uh, but all of those same tools work equally well, I think, with both groups. It's just that they're essential for the virtual group. Right, right. So, so here's a question. Compared, if, if you were all together, all in the same locale where you could see each other face to face, versus virtual, what is something you think that a virtual group has over a in real life group, and then vice versa? What is something that perhaps the virtual group lacks that you know you would love to have from a in person group? With regard to the advantage of the virtual group, besides discussing various topics, we do have meetings where we do critiques. Uh, we'll have exchanged excerpts in advance, we view those excerpts, and then at the meeting, we'll critique them. And frankly, I think it's easier to give a um, accurate critique and it's also easier to receive an accurate critique when you have the, uh, the, the distance of the, when you have the computer between you. When you can't reach across the table and slap the snot out of somebody who needs it, right? Right, right. Okay. Okay. And where hearing what can be tough criticism, you can smile politely while, you know, you're, you're, you're clenching your fist or you're kicking the cat. And then when it's all over, uh, our meetings tend to be about an hour or so. When it's all over, now you can, you know, swear and say that no good person doesn't know how to read. Uh, <laughs> or you can sit back and say, well, gee, maybe they had a point after all. Might be so uh, that's, a, that's a really interesting point, that using that the greater internet dickwad theory, the idea that, that anonymity and distance kind of makes people a little bit more uh, bristly or whatever, in, or distance than in person, and, and putting that to good effect. Because one of the problems with getting critiques from people you know and like and friends is they tend to be a little nice to you, uh, nicer than maybe they should be. So that's a really interesting point. So do you ever have, find your your skills as a divorce lawyer coming into play in terms of mediating or or separating people or 
uh, not not during the meeting. Everybody is well behaved during the meeting, but there certainly are times when uh, between meetings, uh, emails need to be sent that help bring things back into balance. Okay, that was very politically correct, so thanks for that. Spoken like a uh, lawyer. <laughs> you, you touched on this a little bit um, earlier, but what is your specific process for, like, let's say I'm in your group, I have a document I want some critique on. What's my, how do you work that? Do I send an email out to the, the group? Is it just an email list, a Google group, and then put it in Dropbox and everyone downloads it, or what? what's the flow there? So we discussed what the, what the agenda will be several weeks in advance, so people know when they've got a critique coming up. You don't just say, I want something reviewed. You say, okay, we're now going to quit discussing topics for a time, and we're going to start doing critiques, and this is the order that we're going to do them in. And there, we have one person who prefers to send attachments, and we let that happen. But the preference, and what most of us do, is we uh, send a link to everybody and say, you know, my my excerpt, my submission is in this Dropbox folder. You've been given access to it, and of course, the advantage of that is that everybody can open it. Each other person can open that folder, mark it up, and then send it back so that when when you're done. Not only have you received your verbal critique, but you actually also have five marked up copies of what you've submitted with their written comments. And so the written comments tend to be a little bit more in, in detail. They cover grammar and punctuation a little bit more, whereas the verbal critiques tend to be more uh, uh, concepts, plot holes, things like that. Sure. So, I any particular reason that you get, say, five individual ones back where people edit the document versus each person adds their notes into one document so the person gets one document back with all of the comments in it? Just preference we, or? We talked about it and it's just preference. But okay. certainly both ways are up. You know, either way is, is an option. It's simply what our group decided to do. Absolutely fair enough. So if someone out there is looking to either join an online writing group or start one of their own, uh, what tips would you give them to get that going? Well, the, the key issue, of course, is you've got to find a group that you're compatible with because you need to, for, for some people, you're not going to feel comfortable giving critiques or receiving critiques. Uh, you're not going to value their opinion and what they have to say whether it's online or whether it's actual. You need to find those people. You know, the, the Google communities, I think, would be an excellent place to find people who are posting things that, that are of interest to you. Uh, you post responses back. You then take those posts off community. And you know, the, the same way that you would find a friend in real life, you simply translate that to the virtual world and find people who you have common interests and you think you're going to end up with a group that covers a, a wide range of abilities and skills and, and, and brings forth information from all these different areas. In our group, I'm a lawyer. We've got somebody who's a, a housing coordinator. We've got a, a scientist who writes patent language. We've got you know, in terms of hobbies, we've got somebody who skydives, we've got a ballroom dancer, we've got somebody who does uh, uh, you know, does a lot of ocean fishing. So we have all of these diverse areas, and that's what makes the uh, group interesting. Yeah, if you keep it monolithic, it's going to be a lot less. So I was waiting for you to say a doctor and Indian chief, but it didn't actually come out that Not way. Not quite. We're yeah. looking. We're looking. Some of, some of us are showing our age there. Well, Lori, thank you very much for being on the program with us today, and thank you for sharing all that wonderful information on the digital world of writing groups. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And we will have some links to something and some fantastic show notes right up. I don't know what it'll be. I'll figure that out later because um, it's, you know, 
that's what we do at the end of the show anyhow. So anyhow, that's going to do it. The Let's see, how do I do this part? Oh, yes, I say that you can go to booksandbeer.com for those show notes, and then I say... The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of E Publish Unum. We help authors by creating workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps to help them figure out the complexity of indie publishing. Sound interesting? Check us out at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moyarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for being a part of the show.